how's it going everybody coming at you a little later today than uh than i've been driving i just uh was jamming out to music when i uh, woke up this morning and didn't really feel like recording as you can tell i just got to the terminal uh i was actually supposed to make my delivery in uh at a company down the road uh they wouldn't take the load today so i ended up uh calling the my dispatch and getting a um, a T call set up here at the Memphis terminal. So I'm gonna park this trailer. My next load is already here, so I'm gonna hook up to that and then uh, start heading up towards Indiana and uh, kind of start my way home. I'm gonna try to get some cool video for you guys. Um, backing into the spot, I'm gonna try to put the phone on the or the uh, camera on the trailer and. Uh, see if I can get some kind of cool different videos but uh, anyways this is gonna be a short intro um, hope everybody's having a good day and uh, might be a short day of videos but um, I'll put them all together and make it uh, make it look decent so anyways we'll see you on the road Hopefully everybody liked that angle. I, that was kind of fun actually doing that one. Um, but yeah, we got uh, got the load. It's uh, 29,000 pounds. Going to Plainfield, Indiana. Actually, a Pep Boys distribution center. Um, got a load of Michelin uh, or Cooper tires actually. Um, 458 miles. Just uh, just over seven hours. If you uh, if I ever tell you the how many miles I have. Just divide that by 60, so you figure, you know, a mile a minute, you know, it's pretty easy to figure out. So 400, 420 miles is seven hours. Um, but yeah, so I got just over uh, seven hours to get out there. Got enough clock, or time on my clock to get up there, and uh, yeah, I'll try to get some video out there on the road. Um, it's a different part of Indiana, going through Indianapolis, so should be, uh, I'll try, I know it'll be dark, it'll be about 1, 1 a.m. when I get there, so, but I'll do what I can, so, anyways, I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out cool, after doing that one there, mounting the camera on the back of the trailer, I might do that one a couple more times, I thought that actually looked pretty neat, um, I try to, I'm just trying to come up with some cool new angles and everything like that to show you guys, it's, it's pretty fun, I love this, this mount, I mean, this, this thing is awesome, it's, these bend as you can tell I didn't bend them back yet or bend them back straight but this thing's amazing I love it um, it's really helped to uh, bring different angles to the channel so anyways just about to hop on the interstate so see you later
how's it going everybody yeah it's a it's a Friday <laughs> I'm definitely ready for home uh, I didn't do an outro last night because it's uh, started raining a little bit and it got foggy and then when I got shut down I was just dead tired so I figured I was just gonna shut down <clears throat> for the night and just be done um, but uh, yeah I just got uh, just got to the Gary terminal here i um, gonna be picking up my uh, trailer or I got my trailer hooked up and uh, nice part is it's air ride it's an air ride trailer so it's a spring ride trailer like normal so it'll be a nice smoother ride except for it's only a 4,000 pound load which is awesome for fuel but it's it's not gonna the air ride's not gonna make much of a difference with that but uh, the air ride trailers are really nice to have with really heavy loads um, but yeah it's been uh, it's been a pretty good week so far um, with miles. I'm gonna check here how many miles I got, but I know I got uh, 460 miles to go to get home. Um, I'm just t-calling this load at the terminal. Uh, my truck is done, which is awesome. And then uh, my truck's done and uh, I'm trying to get the windshield replaced. I don't know if that's going to get replaced this weekend. If not, I have an appointment for two weeks from now. Uh, then that way when I'm doing the videos, you'll see that there's no big chip in the in the screen. Um, but yeah, so, so far right now I have 3,489 miles that I've put on for the since Sunday. Um, I've used 394.4 gallons of fuel. Oh, excuse me. If you times that by uh, $3 a gallon, then you know how much I've spent on fuel. Um, but yeah, so can't wait to get out of this truck. I miss my truck a lot. Uh, I can't wait to try out the new clutch and to see how it drives. Um, I have a load leaving from uh, Post Serial in Northfield, Illinois, or Northfield Minnesota on... Uh, either Monday or Tuesday, whatever day I choose. And then I'm bringing that either to Memphis or to, um, to Columbus and going to be T calling that cause that load actually goes down to Florida, but, uh, there's not much in Florida to get me out of there to get me back towards Minnesota. So we'll just bring it down in that area. And then that, that way I can stay on around the automotive stuff, which is what I try to stick stick around and try to do because that's the account that I'm on. But anyways, I'll try to get some video on the way home. Um, going through Chicago and stuff. This is, like I said, this has been, you know, this, this run, I've done this run from Gary to Minnesota a bunch of times. If you want to see what the run is like, look in the descriptions on the videos. You'll notice uh, I put like, you know, where I'm going, like where I'm starting, where I'm going, maybe what cities I'm going through. Um, like last night I tried going, when I went through Indianapolis, I went by Indianapolis Motor Speedway, uh, where the Indy 500 is actually going on this weekend. Um, I, I, well, I went by it where I could see the lights way off in the distance, but it's a good couple of miles from the interstate and uh, it's right between the airport, Indianapolis airport and uh, the interstate or the Indianapolis airport, the interstate and then Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And I couldn't get any video because it was super foggy last night. Um, I tried getting some of the of the airport. You probably have noticed when I, I that uh, at night, all those lights that was the airport that was pretty much about as the extent i could get um but yeah so if you want to look at the you know what the view what the run is like going from gary to minnesota look at the description you'll be able to see what cities i've gone through um and we always say i'm going through and what run i'm doing um but i'll try to get some a little bit uh a little bit maybe for something different today but anyways, I uh, got uh, disc golfing with my with my buddy Adam and a couple other friends tomorrow for his birthday, for Adam's birthday. And then uh, I don't know what else is planned. Um, should be a fun weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, I mean, it'd be awesome because I'll be off until Monday or Tuesday, so that'll be that'll be nice. So anyways, hope everyone's having a good day, and uh, we'll see you on the road.
probably wouldn't do this, but we're going pretty slow right now, so I wanted to show you guys this adaptive cruise that this truck has on it. It's pretty slick. It'll hit the brakes for you, do the jake brakes, downshifting, and then also accelerate as well. It is a little extreme sometimes on the braking and everything like that, um, but yeah, it's kind of it's pretty slick. I'll show you here. So it measures the distance between you and the vehicle in front. That seconds down there, 3.1 is how much distance between me and that vehicle there. And then right now, as you can see, it's downshifting. And if you look over here, that's, that one up in the corner is the brakes. So right now it's hitting the brakes. And it tries to do everything it can to keep a 3.5 second gap between you and the vehicle in front of you. If you see the five and then the A Econ, that's uh, fifth gear and it's an automatic and it's economy mode, which you can't change the mode other than manual and automatic. But then yeah, like look at, I'm not even touching the throttle or the brake. I don't know if you can hear the upshift. It's kind of slick, so this is what it, uh, so it's an eighth. It automatically turns on the Jake brakes, uh, activates them when it needs to. And then, uh, there it goes and it shifts again. So I, I didn't do that, and obviously I didn't shift because the shifter's right there. And yeah, see if I can get like a expanded view for you. That's about as far as it goes. If you notice, it's, so watch, I'll show you, you can hear it. There, just shift it again. But it keeps the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Now it's gonna accelerate up until it gets to 3.5 seconds from the vehicle, that car up there. And once it gets close to 3.5, it'll start decelerating. maintain that gap yeah it's pretty slick uh, that's the only nice part about this automatic that I like other than the ex um, it, it does kind of hit the uh, brakes to an extreme and it's a little tough to get used to um, been a few times it's jammed them on hard and I'm like what are you doing like there's not that big of a gap and it's yeah but I mean, it works. I'm sure it, this is a 17. I'm sure they probably have improved it since uh, then. But uh, yeah, it's got it. It works out decent. You know, unfortunately, it's not perfect yet. But it's kind of slick because my car has the same the same setup, and uh, that has stop and go on it, which is pretty slick. So it'll actually come to a complete stop and then accelerate again by itself from a standstill in uh, stop and go traffic. So that's uh, kind of neat to experience. I remember the first time that happened, I sat there and I had my foot hovering over the brake I'm like oh man <laughs> I don't know if I trust the computer and uh, no it worked it, and it was pretty slick but uh, the only downside is because it leaves such a big gap everybody thinks hey I mean everybody already thinks they can jump in front of a semi anyways and it's okay and totally safe to do but uh, when there's a three and a half second gap it uh, it, it leaves um, a lot of space where people just jump in front of you and then the truck reacts to that and then the truck starts decelerating and sometimes if you jump in front too fast it'll jam on the brakes and that's happened to me a couple times since I've gotten in this and I think there's actually a lot of people out there that do it that are uh, and I'm going to say this very cleanly that are big jerks <laughs> uh, that do that on purpose to, uh, to try to mess with the trucks don't do that Just it's not safe for you it's not safe for the driver um it's not safe for anybody uh, because you do that. Yeah, you're in front, and you know the truck's gonna break. You know it's gonna it's gonna hit the brakes automatically. But what if something happens to the truck and it takes out the car next to them, and it ends up hurting them, or the truck flips over because of uh, some you know some issue or something like that? Just always one thing, please, you guys. I don't know if you've learned anything from from me being a truck driver and following this, but 
be respectful and try to do everything you can to to give give trucks space and and don't cut them off. An, an extra 30 seconds is not going to change your day in getting off an exit ramp or um, getting to your your you know location. Uh, it's especially the last minute cutting across, coming across, and getting off the exit ramp. That happens. I can't even tell you how many times a day that happens to me. It's it's literally mind blowing. But uh, but yeah. So anyways, uh, just got into Wisconsin not too long ago. Um, got about 300 miles left to go. Uh, four or five hours left to drive. So I'm literally going to be getting there just at the end of my clock. And uh, I'm at almost my max. I'm on my 70. So I'll show you guys when I get stopped tonight. Last trailer I'm hauling with this truck. No time to go park it. All right, finally done. I saw my truck in the back. I just gotta get my keys this weekend. Swap all the stuff around from my. Uh, well, sorry if it's windy. Uh, from the rental. Just about to hop in my car. I love my car. Um, Gotta swap all my stuff from the rental and then uh, and then grab uh, put everything back in the uh, in my truck. Oh, I tell you, just seeing it, I was super excited. I'm gonna. It, you can't. It was really dark in the corner where it was at. Wow, it was really windy out here. I'll try to finish this up in the car. System ready. All right. Now it's not as windy. Um, yeah, so my car, my truck's in back. I'm super excited. I wasn't gonna show you. I'm not gonna show you guys the uh, show. There wasn't much to see um, because of the uh, you know the daylight or being uh, it's dark as hell back there. But uh, I jumped in it and fired it up and tested the clutch, and it's it's night and day difference. It's so nice. Um, and man, did I forget and underappreciate how beautiful my dash is the lights and how bright the interior lights are compared to this freaking Freightliner. That's, yeah, I'm excited as hell to uh, to get back in it this next week. I have a load already scheduled to pick up on Monday or Tuesday and then bring that down to Columbus or uh, or um, or Memphis. So anyways, about to head home and uh, got disc golf tomorrow with my boy Adam and Andy and I think uh and Scott and uh I think Matt I'm not quite sure um and a couple maybe a couple other people but uh I'll get, I'll get some video of that too hopefully um and uh it's Adam's birthday so yeah it should be a fun weekend um anyways hope everybody has, has a good uh night good morning good day wherever you're at and we'll see you tomorrow